Item Number SCP-333-J Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-333-J has been purchased from the owner through a front corporation and staffed with agents and researchers, who will keep detailed records of all anomalous events happening within SCP-333-J. Due to the high volume of transfer requests, no further agents will be stationed at SCP-333-J until further notice. SCP-333-J is a bar called Skippy's Corner Pub, located 10 miles west of… Periodically, persons of various backgrounds and professions will be drawn into the bar to interact with either bar staff, patrons, or one another. Occasionally, Various animals and objects have manifested to assist in these interactions. There seems to be no observable correlation between those affected to date and the majority of affected persons have shown no ill effects due to exposure to SCP-333-J following their interaction with its effect. The following log is a record of various interactions observed within SCP-333-J. Researchers are encouraged to investigate further and add their own findings. Research Log 333-J Date A man walks into the bar with a metal box under one arm and a duck under the other. The man walks up to the bar and says to the bartender, If you give me a free bottle of beer, I'll show you my dancing duck. The barman is surprised, but gives the guy a bud and asks the bloke to show him the duck dancing. So the guy puts the metal box in the bar and stands the duck on top of it. A few seconds later, the duck starts to jump around, as if he's doing an Irish jig. Everyone in the bar is now watching this duck dancing, and the barman offers the guy $50 for the duck in the box. The bloke accepts, and the pub is filled day and night for three days with people watching the amazing dancing duck. So three days after he sold the barman the duck, the guy walks back into the pub and sees his duck dancing on the box on top of the bar. The barman sees the guy and offers him a bottle of Bud on the house. As he gives the guy the Bud, the barman asks, Could you tell me how you stopped the duck from dancing on top of the box? The man replies, Oh, that's easy. You just take the hot coals out. Notes, what a ducking travesty. Agent Date A pony walks into the bar and says, Bartender, may I have a drink? Bartender says, what? I can't hear you. Speak up. May I please have a drink? What? You have to speak up. Could I please have a drink? Now listen, if you don't speak up, I will not serve you. I'm sorry. I'm just a little hoarse. Note. Obviously, it was a Shetland pony. Agent. Date. A blind man walks into the bar with a CNI dog. When the blind man reaches the center of the bar, he snatches the dog up by his collar and starts swinging him around and around. The bartender speaks up and says, Hey, what the hell are you doing? The blind man says, Just taking a look around. Note, an insufferable booze hound. Agent Date A guy walks into the bar and sees a dog lying in the corner licking his balls. He turns to the bartender and says, Boy, I wish I could do that. The bartender replies, You better try petting him first. Notes. I got nutting for that. Agent. Date. A guy walks into the bar with a newt on his shoulder and orders a drink. The bartender says, Nice pet. What's his name? His name is Tiny, the man replies. Why do you call him that? Because he's my newt. Notes. Agent. Notes. Okay, that one's a little funny. Agent Date An elderly man and woman enter the bar and ask the bartender for their usual drinks. The bartender serves him, speaking to the man. Mr. Johnson, it's been a while since we saw you last. How are you and your wife doing? We were worried about you. The last time you came in, you didn't seem to recognize or remember anyone. The elderly gentleman responds, Well, you know how it is when you start getting up in years but I've been seeing a fantastic memory therapist. She's taught me some mental exercises that'll help me to remember all the important things in life. 
The bartender says, That's great! What's the therapist's name? The elderly gentleman looks confused before snapping his fingers. What's that flower? The red one with thorns on its stem? The bartender answers, A rose? Yes, that's it. The older man smiles before turning to his wife. Rose, what's the name of that therapist I've been seeing? Date. A man walks into the bar. He has a seat, and the surly bartender stomps over and rudely asks the man what he wants. Actually, I don't want a drink, says the man. I want to make a bet. I bet you fifty dollars I can lick my left eye. Confused, but knowing the improbability, the bartender says, You're on. The man proceeds to remove his glass eye and lick it. Angry but admitting defeat, the bartender pays him. I'd like to make another bet, says the man. I bet $100 I can bite my right eye. Knowing he couldn't possibly have two glass eyes, and wanting to win his money back, the bartender agrees. The man takes out his false teeth, then uses them to bite the other eye. Now really angry, the bartender gives him $100. The man then leaves the bartender alone and walks around the bar chatting it up and drinking with the other patrons. They all talk drink and share a huge laugh while the bartender stews about his lost money. The man staggers back and says, Tell you what, I'll bet you all the money I won, but double, that I can pee in that shot glass from here without spilling a drop. The bartender looks at the shot glass, which is a good ten feet away, and knows for a fact that this cannot be done. He boldly agrees, double, three hundred dollars and not a single drop outside the glass. You have a bet. The man positions himself. The man positions himself up on the. The man positions himself on the bar, unzips, and begins to urinate. The urine goes all over the bar, the counter, even the bartender himself. The bartender laughs and says, "All right, you lost fair and square. Now pay up." Calmly, the man pulls out three hundred dollars and hands it to the bartender. He goes around the bar talking to the patrons again, and comes back looking joyful. The bartender asks, Why are you so happy? You just lost $300. Because I bet everyone else here $100 each that I could piss all over your bar, on your counter, even on you, and you wouldn't get mad. Notes. Next time something like this happens, I'm intervening. Agent. Notes. Go for it. Better they piss on you than me. Agent. Date. A monkey, a vampire, and a dozen soldiers walk into a bar. The monkey says, What is this? Some kind of joke? Notes. I don't get it. Agent. Notes. Dr. Bright is no longer allowed to request the use of SCP-0762 or Mobile Task Force Omega-7 for testing, or test SCP-333-J under any circumstances. Furthermore. Dr. Bright is no longer allowed to refer to SCP-0762 as a vampire in his reports. Date. A man walks into the bar and pulls from his jacket a tiny man and an equally tiny piano. The tiny man plays the piano perfectly, to the amusement of the crowd. The bartender asks the man how he got him. The man shows the bartender a magic lamp and offers to sell it for $100 to which the bartender agrees. A genie appears from the lamp and offers one wish. The bartender asks for a million bucks. Moments later, the entire bar is filled with an insane number of ducks. After the bar is evacuated, the bartender tells the man, Damn it! I asked for a million bucks, not ducks. Bucks! The man says, Tell me about it. Do you really think I asked for a 12-inch pianist? Notes. Damn right. What am I supposed to do with this room full of gorgeous snowmen? Agent Notes. The location of both Lamp and Genie after the destruction of the Mega Flock could not be determined. Provisional designation SCP has been made, pending retrieval. Date A priest, a rabbi, and a humpback whale walks into the bar. After a few minutes, they got the bartender's attention and are ready to get their drinks. The bartender asks him, What'll you have? The priest says, Well, I've accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, so I have some sacramental wine. The bartender serves him his drink and then looks at the rabbi and asks him what he'll have. Well, the rabbi orders, 
I believe that our messiah has not yet come, so I'd like a glass of your finest Manischewitz. The bartender nods and then, finally, looks at the humpback whale. And what about you, big guy? He asks with a friendly smile. And the whale says, "Ooh." Note. So I served him seagrams, agent. Note. In retrospect, we should have noticed something was up as soon as a whale walked into the bar, agent. Date. Man walks into the bar. Note. Medic team arrives approximately after incident. Male treated for concussion. Note. Why was that bar hanging a head height, agent? Note. We sure lowered the bar around here, agent. Note. He'll never pass the bar that way, agent. Note. Barring that, this was a pretty good joke. Agent. Note. All agents involved in this incident KIA due to See Addendum 333-J01 for further information. Date. A guy walks into a bar and sees a horse in the corner, with a glass jar stuffed with $20 bills. The guy orders a drink and asks the bartender what the deal is with the horse. The bartender says, Simple. You put a 20 in the jar. And if you can make the horse laugh, the jar is yours. The guy thinks about it a few minutes, puts a 20 in the jar, and whispers something in the horse's ear. The horse immediately busts out laughing, and the guy takes the jar, finishes his drink, and leaves. A few weeks later, the guy goes back to the same bar, where the same horse is in the corner with a new jar of 20s. The guy orders a drink and asks about the horse, and the bartender says, Put a 20 in. And this time, you get the jar if you can make the horse cry. The guys think a little, and after a couple of drinks, put a 20 in the jar and whisper something in the horse's ear. The horse gives the guy a funny look and a moment later starts bawling. The guy takes the jar back with him to the bar, and the bartender says, Man, I have never seen anyone make that horse laugh or cry. What in the world did you say to it? The guy says, to make the horse laugh, I told him my dick was bigger than his. To make him cry, I proved it. Note. According to the bartender, the guy said his name was Willie Johnson. Agent. Note. What an enormous prick. Agent. Date. A guy walks into a bar after a long day at work and orders a drink. After his first sip, he hears a high-pitched voice. Hey mister, nice pants, it says. He looks around, doesn't see anything, and quickly shrugs it off. After a little bit, he takes another sip and hears the voice again. Hey mister, sweet shoes. Again he looks around, sees nothing but a bartender who is busy attending to other customers. Shaking his head, he sips once more. Hey mister, cool shirt. He puts down his drink, frustrated at this phantom voice, and signals to the bartender who comes over. Hey, barkeep, he begins. What is that high-pitched voice I keep hearing? Oh, those are the peanuts, he replies. They're complimentary. Note, unfortunately, he still had to pay for them. Agent. Date. A woman walks into the bar and asks the bartender for a double entendre, so he gives her one. Note, never heard about that one in my mixology classes. Agent. Note, oh, it's easy. Two fingers and shake it. Agent. Date. A man walks into the bar. It's quite noisy, so he calls out to the bartender and shouts, Eight beers, please, mate. A while later, the bartender gives him four beers. The man looks at the quattro beverages a bit befuddled and says, I ordered eight beers, man. You held up four fingers. Well, I used to have to order eight, but then I got a job at the sawmill. The bartender apologizes to get him four more beers, on the house. A while later, the man has finished his drinks, and he has to piss something awful, so he goes to the bartender and asks if there's a bathroom here. Sure, mate, right over here, says the bartender, pointing at the men's room. The man looks a bit shifty, then asks in a hushed tone, Don't you have a ladies' room around here? Now why do you want that? Well, I used to be able to use the men's room. But then I got a job at the sawmill. 
Note, jokes like this are seriously hurting the lumber industry. Who would want that job after hearing this joke, Agent? Note, are you saying this joke should be cut, Agent? Note, OSHA er, Agent. Date. A butcher walks into the bar and looks around. He smiled, then waited a number of his friends. The butcher then goes on to order a round of beers for his mates that just walked in, when he stopped and stared at the last person to sit down. The bartender, wary of violence, looked over the newcomers and noticed that each was carrying a piece of meat. The person the butcher was staring at looked nervous and stood up. He tried to hide his cut of meat behind his back, but failed when the butcher reached over and grabbed it. The meat flopped sadly around in his hand, gray and forlorn. The butcher suddenly turned beet red and threw the meat out the door. Grabbing the poor soul's shirt, he dragged him along the floor, grabbed a ham hock from out of his backpack and started to beat him. After a few seconds, the butcher picked up the offender, punched him in the face and threw him out of the bar. The bartender gasped, appalled by the sudden burst of violence and asked, What did you do that for? The butcher takes one look at the bartender and replies, Why, he just didn't make the cut. Notes. You have to stop jokes like this. I don't think you realize what's at stake, Agent. Notes. Yeah, we better ground ourselves before this gets way too out of hand, Agent. Notes. Why, I'd say this definitely made the grade, Agent. Hey you guys, I don't want to get out the tenderizer, but I'll be forced to if this doesn't stop. I find this utterly unamusing. Agent. Date. A cowboy walks into a completely empty bar and orders a whiskey. As the bartender pours his drink, he asks, Is it always this slow? Nah, says the barkeep. Everyone's just gone to the hanging. They finally caught Newspaper Pete. Newspaper Pete? The cowboy asks. What kind of a name is that? One that fit him. He always wore a newspaper hat, a newspaper shirt. Newspaper trousers? Newspaper shoes? Oh, what are they hanging them for? Rustling. That must have been front page noose, Agent. Mob justice isn't usually this black and white, Agent. I knew newspapers were a dying medium, but this is ridiculous, Agent. Date. Rene Descartes walked into a bar. Want a beer, buddy? The bartender asks. I think not, Descartes replies and promptly vanishes. Note, I drink, therefore I am. Agent. Date. A man storms into a bar, orders a drink, slams it back in one, and stands up to declare to all present, I just want everyone to know that lawyers are assholes. Hey, yells a guy in the back of the bar. I take exception to that. What? The first man snarls, are you a lawyer? No, I'm an asshole. Date. Two peanuts walk into a bar. One of them orders a drink while the other sits down at the table. Suddenly, three men stand up from a nearby table and begin attacking the sitting peanut mercilessly before fleeing from the bar. The peanut is carried out of the bar by its fellow. Note. Obviously, one must have been a… Agent. Date. A bear walks into a bar. He sits down and looks at the bartender and asks, May I have a gin? After several seconds, it added, Antonic? Of course you can, the bartender says, but why the pause? He waved his arms at the bartender and says, Because I'm a bear! Notes. A real Kodiak moment. Agent. Date. A C note, an F note, and a G note walk into the bar. The bartender says, sorry, we don't serve minors. The C note turns to the F note and says, I told you to act natural. Note, that ended on a rather silly note. Agent. I think this joke fell flat. Agent. I don't know, it struck a chord with me. Agent. I'm just glad they didn't start any treble with the barkeep. Agent. Date. A mushroom walks into the bar and for the rest of the night is the center of attention as everyone has a good time. 
After he left, all the patrons agreed that he was a fun guy. Date. Past, present, and future walk into the bar. Notes. Man, the mood was tense after they showed up. Agent. Date. Two pieces of string walk into the bar. One string asks for a beer, but the bartender says, we don't serve your kind here. The string that made the order walks out. The second string begins writhing on the floor in order to tatter its ends and tie itself up. It then also asks for a beer. The bartender says, didn't you hear me the last time I said we don't serve your kind here? The string replies with, no, I am afraid not. Note, like I haven't heard that line before, agent. Date. A leper walks into the bar with a pet chimp in hand. The bartender takes a look at the pair and says, hey, you get that thing out of here, we don't serve them here. The chimp looks at the leper then back at the barkeep and responds, come on, give him a break, he's wasting away over here. Note, you should have seen the tip that guy left, agent. Turns out the monkey just keeps the leper around to give him a hand, agent. Date. A man walks into a bar with a slab of asphalt under one arm. He says, I'll have a beer please, and one for the road. Date. An anomalously large hydrogen atom enters the bar and hovers around erratically, claiming to have lost an electron. After helping it look for several minutes, the bartender asks, Are you sure you lost it? The atom says, Yes, I'm positive. Date. A set of jumper cables walks into the bar. The bartender looks at him and says, Okay, I'll serve you, but don't start anything. Date. A bird flies into the bar. The bartender then promptly serves it a drink. The bird started to fly away, but then the bartender grabbed it and said, We don't allow cheapskates. Note, now you're really winging it. Agent. Date. An agent walks into the bar on a Thursday and orders three beers. The bartender thinks nothing of it and goes about his business. The agent finishes his alcohol, pays his tab, and leaves. Come the next Thursday, the agent again returns to the bar, orders three beers, drinks, pays, and leaves. So the bartender decides that the agent must be a regular, and decides to see if he returns the following week. Sure enough, he does, so the bartender decides to ask the agent about his drinking practices. The agent says, I have two brothers, and we used to go out on Thursday to drink. One is a researcher at site, and the other is in mobile task force. We've agreed that we'll all drink the other brother's beers until we're all together again. The bartender nods and gets back to work. For the next several months, the agent continues to order his three beers, until one day he only orders two. The bartender thinks the worst has happened and asks, is everything okay? Yeah, everything's fine, the agent replies. Well, you usually order three beers, are your brothers okay? Oh yeah, that. Well, I got reassigned to SCP and the containment procedure says I can't drink. These are my brother's beers. Date. An agent walks into the bar and orders an Irish car bomb. Twelve Foundation agents were killed and a further seventeen were wounded. Date. A pirate walks into the bar with a steering wheel protruding from the front of his pants. When questioned by the bartender, he explains, Yar, It's driving me nuts! Date. A man walks into the bar with a giraffe. They consume many rounds of drinks until the giraffe is passed out on the floor. The man stands up to leave the bar, and the bartender calls after him, Hey, you can't just leave that lion there. The man replies, That's no lion, it's a giraffe. Date. A skeleton without any arms walks into the bar. The bartender says, Is this a joke? Because I don't find it humorous. Date. An older man walks into the bar wearing a stovepipe hat, a waistcoat, and a phony beard. He sits down at a bar and orders a drink. As the bartender sets it down, he asks, Going to a party? Yeah, a costume party, the man answers. I'm supposed to come dressed as my love life. But you look like Abe Lincoln, protests the bartender. That's right, my last four scores were seven years ago. Date. A zombie limps into the bar. A panicked patron attacks him with a machete and cuts off his left arm and left leg, then flees. 
The bartender rushes to the zombie and asks, Are you okay, sir? The zombie replies, Don't worry, I'm alright. Note, I feel as if I've been left out of the joke, Agent. This encounter would have gone a lot differently had the zombie been armed, Agent. Date. A man enters the bar and orders a Bloody Mary. The resulting specter was contained after five Foundation and two civilian casualties. Date. An anomalously large neutron enters the bar and asks, How much for a drink? The bartender replies, For you, no charge. Note, I'm not positive that I get the joke, Agent. Date. SCP-073 walks into the bar. The bartender says, Hey, you can get a free drink if you can land this ball in the cup across the room. SCP-073 replies, I'm sorry, sir, but I don't think I'm able. Notes. Investigation into how SCP-073 breached containment is still ongoing. Date. An infinite number of mathematicians walks into the bar. The first orders a drink. The second orders half a drink. The third orders a quarter of a drink. The fourth is about to order when the bartender stops him and pours two drinks. Notes. These guys need to learn their limits. 05 Addendum 333-J01 Under no circumstances may SCP-504 be taken within 10 km of SCP-333-J. 05 